find ourselves here and I ask where are we and who is we? Where shall we go? For some reason I suspect that the question and the issues relate to a bigger audience, a bigger grouping of people than the citizens of Mafeking and the Northwest Province. Reference is made to the age when the rocks were soft. And that was when Butu was taught and instilled at home. Those days, you would never come across a situation where a person so groomed would find it possible to want to stone the premier of a province. So something is missing somewhere. And those days, it really did take a child or a, a, a village or a community to raise a child. Every father, every elder was your parent and you could be sent anytime, anywhere by any elder. Obedience to lawful authority was the order of the day. Respect for self, respect for another, respect for something that belongs to another was the order of the day. Consequently, ah, this rape, sexual abuse of the young and the old, incidents of students beating up teachers, stabbing them, chasing them around, the destruction of property that you need in order for your future to be properly shaped so that you can be a meaningful player in society was an error. And maybe part of our problem is that when occasions like this arise to exchange ideas, we want to impress, we push for a standing ovation instead of focusing on what matters the most. And that is, dealing with practical issues that we have turned a blind eye towards for far too long as a result of which society, not only in Mafikeng, in the Northwest, in South Africa, but all over the world, have degenerated into the state in which it finds itself. It is no longer possible to counsel or to rebuke a child that you did not give birth to, not that it's any easy to rebuke your own. There is total collapse in many respect of any system, of any institution that represents authority. Courts exist, but their orders can be disregarded by whoever wants to disregard them. In fact, People believe that all you have to do is stand outside a court of law with placards and tell them what decision to render. If they don't, then it means they are either corrupt or incompetent. So, what is it that we need to do? Because the truth be told, it is the little foxes that ruin, that spoil the vine. It is not those highly complex, highly sophisticated ideas that are going to get us back to the era where the rocks are soft. It is a return to the fundamentals. It is a return to the basics. Do we still teach values and ethics in our homes? Do we still teach the values that explain why our elders Professor Mokoro, Professor Kwari have turned out to be who they are now? Or do we think something much more sophisticated that is gathered from books is what will change us into the kind of society and the kind of nation 
we need to be. I urge us all to go back to the basics. Let's find ways, practical ways of instilling discipline. Let us desist from greed. Because the state in which the world is right now is explained fundamentally by greed. Why do we have, is it Idai, Cyclone Idai? Why did we have Hurricane Michael? Somebody who has an insatiable appetite for money decided that they are going to pursue wealth regardless of the consequences. They are going to toxify our rivers, cut down the trees, run their mines and industries, whichever way would enable them to amass as much wealth as they can amass. And who is speaking against greed? Where is authority? Why do we have so much corruption? Where are we when things go wrong? Are we seeking favors? Are we afraid that if we were to say what is in line with those ethical standards that will enable us to become who we are supposed to be, ethical standards that will result in everybody enjoying life, even if we may not have amassed the same level of wealth, are we afraid that if we were to confront those in authority, those who have power, those who have money, we may never be given the share that we are so hungry for. When there is corruption in government and in the private sector, who speaks? When mining companies don't own up to their social responsibilities, who speaks? When money that is due to communities is not being deployed for that purpose, who speaks? What are we looking for? All we need are basic principles, the values, ethical standards. When we know that a leader is lying, why do we keep on supporting that leader? Why do you keep on supporting somebody that you know is up to no good, is looking after his, her, or family interest, or the interest of their friends? I'm here to say we need to be united in doing the right thing. And the right thing is espousing those values that explain why our forebears were at peace with each other, those values that explain why crime was at, it, at its lowest during our times as babies, those values that explain where there was orderliness, law was respected, other people were respected, where greed was frowned upon. Let me round it up as follows. As a small boy, nobody would go hungry in my village. Members of my village would make sure that they seek out anybody who doesn't have food and provide for them. And there was a concept of my visa, an integral part of Botu. If you don't have cattle or goats, they would give you some animals so that you are a dignified member of society. You can farm with them. As they increase, you return part of them uh, to the owner and keep a portion in line with your agreement. Hard work was celebrated. I think a time must come for us to interrogate very closely our social grant system. What are we encouraging? Is it sustainable? At least 150 billion rands per month? How many jobs could you possibly create if you were not to seek to be populist, if you did not suffer from approval addiction or affirmation addiction, if you stood on principle? Our people used to build houses for themselves. They would come together. There was social cohesion. We allocated a plot. We come together. We dig out the trees. You start building. We rally around your project. We make bricks together. We build a house together. 
If it is thatch that is required, we go harvest thatch and help you build your house. Even schools, every community build a school for itself. Even clinics, what happened? Give me, give me, give me, give me. So, once upon a time we were industrious, we were self-sufficient, farming was encouraged, not anymore. I don't know what is it that got rid of uh, subsistence farming, crop farming, animal husbandry, I don't know, but something went wrong somewhere. And the result is poverty, crime, when students destroy, when members of community destroy much needed property, we, we don't want to offend. We all mind our business and the result is where we are. When greed begins to define what is, how business is run in a country and globally, nobody wants to say anything. because there may be consequences should you dare raise your voice. So I conclude by saying, people, I don't have any of the sophisticated messages you might have been looking forward to. The solution is easy. Let's desist from greed. Let us define ethical standards by which everybody must lead from a tender age, even as adults, when we embrace those rules, those values, those principles by which Mema Suku grew up, then we will have responsible people at every level of society. Even when you have leaders in positions of authority, you would never have to think twice about whether they are committed to doing the right thing or not. That's my simple message. Go back to those fundamentals that have proved to work everywhere else around the world. Thank you.